I am Robin Warner, an experienced engineer and magazine editor, and I am driving a 2021 BMW M550i X-Drive sedan. And I liked BMWs for a long time. I first drove them in the late 90s. I got an E46 BMW 3 Series, and I could see the appeal, why people loved driving these cars. I thought they were cool, but I didn't love them. But then I got to drive an E39 M5, a V8 powered 400 horsepower crazy machine that I just absolutely instantly fell in love with. And that's when I first saw what BMW was really all about. And this car carries on the spirit of that E39 M5. But before I get too far, let me first tell you just what the BMW M550 is. The government classifies the BMW 5 Series as a mid-size sedan that seats five, though it feels pretty big to me. Depending on how you look at it, the BMW M550i xDrive is either the lowest trim M level 5 Series you can get beneath the M5 and M5 competition sedans, or it's near the top of the larger lineup above the 530e, the 530i, the 540i, and all their respective sub-variants, which means it includes Dakota leather seats, M Sport brakes, and the M Sport differential. Much more importantly, it is powered by a twin turbocharged 4.4 liter V8 producing a peak output of 523 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque. That power then goes through an 8-speed automatic transmission and onto all four wheels. The base price for the 2021 5 Series, which is the 530i, is $55,195. An M550i xDrive starts at $77,795 and my test car costs $93,735. For those that are interested, I included detailed specifications, including dimensions, fuel economy, and options in the description. All right, let's take a look around the car. Okay, here is the 2021 BMW M 550i xDrive sedan. And this one is painted in Aventuron red metallic paint, which is a $1,950 optional color, but it is pretty and even prettier when the car is clean, I have no doubts. This car does come standard with full LED headlights, which also have automatic high beams, which are nice, I like that. This is the new, for 2021, redesigned kidney grill with more pronounced vertical slats um, among the changes. It's also, you know, a bit bigger and wider. You know, the kidney grills of old were more subtle back in the day. Also that down there, that's adaptive cruise control stuff that you're looking at. This car does not have the standard for the M550i 19 inch wheels. It has the optional 20 inch wheels that come with non run flat performance tires in the summer. Uh, this is not the summer and this is not the Sun Belt. So those are winter tires but you do have those big old M Sport brakes. Those are also standard on the M550. Another neat trick of the M550 is this nice subtle little spoiler right here. I like that it's just a nice little thing, tasteful, nothing too loud. They do like you to know that it is an X drive. It is standard with all wheel drive and that's in fact the only way you can get the M550i. You do get these two big exhaust ports, but they're actually quad tips. You just have to look a little bit deeper inside. And you've got this tiny little like faux rear diffuser thing going on. I mean, that's virtually nothing and obviously just there for cosmetics. This is not a small car. This is nearly 196 inches long. The wheelbase is over 117 inches, but it is updated for the seventh generation and it's just a very clean sharp looking elegant stately sedan and uh it's not slow either but let's take a look inside okay quickly heading inside but before we do i'm going to grab the keys and let me tell you why because as you walk close to the car 
it opens automatically, which is nice. And as you walk away, it locks automatically. That's a cool feature. What you will see inside here is this really nice leather upholstered dash, which is a $700 option. The Dakota leather seats come standard with the M550i. You also have a 12.3 inch instrument cluster screen and a 12.3 inch center console screen. And then because this car has the $2,150 executive package, I also have head up display and a ceramic controls and a few other things to play with. It's, uh, you know, adds elegance, I suppose. This car also has a heated steering wheel for $190, which is a reasonable price considering the prices of everything else. But it's good to know that Apple CarPlay and Android Auto functionality, that's all standard with the car. You also do get um, wireless charging and USB ports and things like that to work with. Um, I do particularly like having iDrive with this car because iDrive and Apple CarPlay work really well together. This is iDrive 7 and it does a lot of good. Another part of the executive package are rear sun stage. So rear sides in the back. Let's see if I can quickly turn the car on and turn that on. Rear sun shades. Rear sun shades. So yeah, it's a very comfortable place to be. And of course this car is well set up. I've got heated seats front and rear and plenty of other things to work with because also that this is the M550, we have paddle shifters and a sportier eight-speed automatic transmission. More on that in a minute. Generally speaking, this is a very comfortable, very nice place to be. And that's in the front or in the back. Actually less room than you'd get in some other mid-sized cars that like to have, uh, you know, large car, as far as the government is concerned, interior space. This BMW 5 Series is just underneath that, 99 cubic feet, and the cutoff is 100 cubic feet. But I'm not wanting for space here. And besides, look, I have rear shade. How about that? Okay, real quick, I wanna discuss drive modes. You can see just to the left of the shifter there, there are three, Eco Pro, Comfort, and Sport but there are actually five drive modes to choose from. Eco Pro, Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus, and Individual. And if I go and press Sport, you can see I have Sport, which is the dynamic setting, but there's also Sport Plus, the extra dynamic setting, and then there's Individual. And then if you configure Individual, you can see that I can configure the dampers, the steering, the engine, the transmission, and even the seat support for dynamic driving, okay? Now, if you go back here, if I go to Eco Pro, that gives me an option to configure the individual setting as well. Comfort, that's just comfort. Either way, you have five settings in the BMW M550i xDrive sedan. There are a wide variety of powertrain options you can now have in a 2021 BMW 5 Series. You can get four, six, or eight cylinders. You can get non-hybrid, mild hybrid, or hybrid and even plug-in hybrid. You can get rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. Unfortunately, you can only get an eight-speed automatic uh, throughout all that. However, there are multiple versions of that eight-speed automatic that you can get. And from those powertrain differences, you can get between 248 and 617 horsepower. <laughs> so there's wide variety. And it goes like this, 248 for the BMW 530i, 288 for the BMW 530e, 335 for the BMW 540i, 
523 for this M550i, 600 for the BMW M5, and 617 for the BMW M5 competition. That is a lot. But from there, there's a fun fact. The top three outputs are all from a 4.4 liter twin turbocharged V8, including this car. And all three of those powertrains make the same amount of peak torque, 553 pound feet. And all three of them make that peak torque from the same RPM, 1800. The difference between the three horsepower outputs is how long that the engines sustain peak torque. So the M550i holds its peak torque until 4,600 RPM. The M5 holds its peak torque until 5,690 RPM, which is a big long torque span. And then the M5 competition coupe goes all the way to 5,860 RPM. Just an extra 150 RPM of the peak torque nets another 17 horsepower in peak horsepower. Anyway, fun little fact. I just wanted to nerd out on that stuff a little bit because it's fascinating to see just where the power comes from. And once you realize that torque and horsepower are directly related, horsepower is just basically torque over time, you can see how the manufacturers can make different outputs from the same engine. Either way, none of the BMW 5 Series are slow. The slowest one, the 530i, still goes 0 to 60 in under 6 seconds, 5.9 seconds. But then as you go up, the M5 competition, BMW claims will hit 60 miles an hour from rest in 3.1 seconds, which is not a lot of seconds. But this M550i is not far off at all. 3.6 seconds, 0 to 60 miles an hour. That's really, really quick. I mean, that's supercar fast from five years ago, right? 10 years ago, maybe. Certainly going all wheel drive plays a role in that, that you can put that power down as effectively as you can. And having the modern transmissions that we do, the eight speed automatics can rip off shifts really quickly, probably near, maybe even under hundred milliseconds. So those things play a role as well. But uh, 3.6 seconds, that's just impressive how you feel it no matter what. And being such an impressive number, I just happened to go to my super special secret, go and accelerate location and do some super special secret going and accelerating. And I want to show you that right now. All right, I am back at my super secret acceleration test location to do a super secret acceleration test. See what this thing is. Now, bear in mind, this is the least powerful of the M5 series cars. So this isn't gonna be that impressive, right? Let's find out. It sounds good. <laughs> go, oh, go! I am invincible! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Munich and V8s are great combinations. Throw in a turbocharger, it's hard to beat. Oh, whew, not bad. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. That was a lot of, a lot of fun. <laughs> 523 horsepower and all that torque comes from two turbochargers and both turbochargers are twin scroll turbochargers. BMW calls it twin power. And what that means is you have two different inlets to help more evenly distribute the exhaust bursts and uh, more quickly spool up the turbochargers. That means less turbo lag and uh, just improved performance generally. Because this is a V8, the V8s get two of those and it makes it very, very effective. As I mentioned before, every single 5 Series comes with an 8-speed automatic, but the uh, M550 and higher, you get these uh, Sport, uh, they call it Sporttronic Plus automatic transmissions uh, and BMW claims that they have faster shifting, they're tuned more aggressively basically, and you also, you have paddle shifters to play with if you want to do the shifting on your own. You also get an M Sport rear differential, which gives you the ability to, it's basically a locking rear diff, so you have uh, limited slip differential capability, and it's all computer controlled to uh, help 
uh, help give you effective exits out of corners and things like that. And I can tell you that it works, but it's also a little bit clouded in the fact that you also have all wheel drive. So you're getting pretty effective, um, you're getting pretty effective uh, corner exits no matter what. But the important thing to know is these BMWs are longitudinally mounted engines. They are rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. So they have rear wheel drive bias. And in addition to that, power is sent to the rear axle more than it's sent to the front. There's a rear axle power delivery bias as well. So you do genuinely retain some uh, rear wheel drive feel even in the all wheel drive models. And on top of that, the full-on M5 and M5 competitions have two-wheel drive modes. So if you want to just go totally bananas and have all the power go to the rear, you can do that, but not in the M550. That's M5, M5 competition to do those things. <laughs> oh, that's Not only does it feel good, it sounds good too. It's so nice to have a proper throaty V8 in this big sedan i just absolutely love it and doesn't get boring doesn't get old and that sound is just intoxicating okay do i wish it was naturally aspirated that would sound a little bit louder a little bit meaner a little bit throatier yes but i'll take this sound over a lot of other options you got there i mean just the auditory pleasure you get from hearing Rawr! come on you just, just, that's worth a lot. That's worth a lot these days. And I respect that it's not only giving me that noise, it's giving me 523 horsepower as it's doing it. What's more, the 2021 5 Series has a double wishbone front suspension and a five link multi link rear suspension geometry. So you've got good advanced suspension to work with, and the M. 550i suspension is dynamic handling, which means I have um, adaptive uh, dampers to use as well. And then this particular M550i has the um, dynamic handling package, which means I have um, the active dampers, but also active roll stabilization, which is uh, basically adaptive anti-roll bars that engage and stiffen up. So body roll and body con body control is really high, and body roll and body pitch and dive is really low. Like properly stiff and flat cornering this thing, and that comes from the fact that you have all these systems but that you also have the drive modes to really crank them up. If I turn on to Sport uh, Plus, I instantly kick up a gear and the transmission shifts get super quick and everything becomes really alive. Just a quick blast of acceleration. Rocket ship, absolute rocket ship. I absolutely love it. But this thing can corner brilliantly flatly you have fantastic turn in response and you have moves that makes you feel like you're in something much smaller than a 196 inch long sedan and that is kind of going back to the spirit of that e39 m5 what was so brilliant about that car was that you had 400 horsepower in a pretty darn big pretty darn heavy sedan but you didn't feel it you just felt fun and athletic and spirited driving that was super engaging and uh, just lively. And it didn't feel like something that was cement to comfortably carry five people. And you get that same sense in this as well. Now, a couple of caveats. I know that a lot has happened in the last you know 20 plus years in technology. Yes, this does have electric power steering, not hydraulic power steering, and all these adaptive uh, systems aren't the same as the good old, old school analog stuff when it's really tuned properly. But considering all those things, this car really does engage well. The steering isn't alive in your hands like the old school, but it is awfully precise and is a very fast rack. It's really easy to control this car and to place it exactly where you want on the road and uh, just have a lot of fun in this thing that can still offer lots and lots and lots of luxury. The dynamic handling package of the M550i adds $3,600 
to the price. It is not cheap, but to have the anti-roll stabilization and to have the extra bits that it adds, I'd say it's 100% worth it because it really makes the car come alive so much more. And that's why you buy a car like that. That's what something like this is for. You also get uh, M Sport brakes as standard in the M550i X-Drive sedan. And that means that you have nice big brake discs and super big calipers to work with to slow down this big and heavy thing, which really comes in handy to build confidence when you're on those back roads because you have brakes with good initial bite and nice consistent pedal feel to just keep your confidence high that uh, you can slow down when you have to. And that makes a big difference uh, when you have a big sedan to scoot around in the country as opposed to a nice little sports car. And yes, in the, in the vein of big sedans, this BMW has plenty of luxury kit to come with it. I mean, this particular one has all kinds of stuff. It has the executive package that I mentioned earlier and a lot of other things, you know, leather dashboard uh, in addition to all the other stuff. But you also have a lot of standard equipment that uh, like driver assistance systems and, you know, um, automatic uh, lane keep assist and, uh, you know, blind spot detection and all those kinds of things. Uh, and yes, you also have things like, um, hey, so-and-so, I'm not going to say it because I don't want it to turn on, but like the voice activated assistance systems and this thing has something called gesture control so you can swivel your hands around to uh, increase and decrease the volume and stuff like that. I don't really care for that kind of stuff. I mean, the fact of the matter is iDrive 7 has gotten really good and I'm just as happy using that as opposed to uh, telling the car what I want and I think it's simpler it takes it takes less mental capacity it's easier to just focus on driving that way but you have it is the point but then you also have a car that is a lot of fun to drive and I'm coming up on some curved roads here and I'm really looking forward to doing some driving I think that I might be in the best 5 Series that BMW makes. The perfect combination of all the luxury you need and all the performance you need for a price point that is below six figures. This is gonna be a lot of fun. I mean, listen to that V8. I'm Robin Warner. Thank you for watching.